Hola amigos, welcome back. Um, <laughs> a significant difference you may notice today is the fact that we don't have the EU4 soundtrack blaring in the background. I do apologise, those first two clips that I did, uh, yes, there was about an hour's worth of just listening to EU4 uh, gameplay and some low muttering in the background. So anyway, uh, let's pick up where we left off. Yeah, I do apologise, I'm still sort of getting used to things and... I, I did those videos and I didn't really sort of have time to review them, I just sort of chucked them up in um, sort of gleeful uh, uh, haste, so um, anyway, here we are, we're back. Now, if I recall correctly, last time, yes, there they are, we did make the comment and we said that this is our opening. This, this is, well, yes, so Verdon here is at war with the Dith Martian and East Frisia, and if you can see by the looks of it, wait, who's Altenberg at war with? Did East Frisia too. Okay. Um. Now I don't quite. Oh, okay. So they So who's who's declared the war here? Who who is the, the so? Verdon is the defender against Dithmarschen in the Dithmarschen conquest of Stade. So Dithmarschen's going to try to take that. Have they wiped out all of Verdun's forces? I do wonder. The bishopric of Verdun, has it been wiped out? Uh, let's have a little gaze, shall we? Uh, where are you there? Oh, ho, ho. yep, this is it. This is our time. Um, we will attack, absolutely. Uh, fingers crossed, Mecklenburg just comes running right into our faces, which we will just gnaw the living shit out of them. Um, all right, let's see how we go here. I'll give it. Come on, come on. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping for. Although, actually, sorry, I thought they were in alt mark. They're not. Uh, that could change things. What do I do here? Well, it, there's nothing really that they they can't do much. They can try and siege up this. Um, I know I've got a bit of. Uh, yeah, fuck it. I mean, look, the only reason why I declared on Verdon purely uh, was based on the fact that I want Mecklenburg. And I can't declare on Mecklenburg themselves because they're allied with Pomerania and the Teutonic Order, which is a bit weird, but I guess that makes sense. Uh, so, what we're going to do is we'll keep our eyes here because we don't want a repeat of what happened with Saxony and my stu stupid movements that I did here, uh, crossing the Elbe River, getting that penalty, and oh god, it was just, it was, it was a mess. I'm a mess. It was a mess. Um, Ooh, this is going to look great. We'll have Visma, we'll have Rostock. Who knows? Maybe we might be, we might be able to... <gasps> you know, what would be awesome... Again, we have to be mindful of aggressive expansion here because what would be freaking fantastic uh, is if we could vassalize Verdun. I know they're a bishopric, so it'll take a while for their liberty desire to go down. But that doesn't matter. Who, who am I... What? What? Shut up. I'm trying to talk as if I know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, that'd be cool. And if we vassalized them, then we could take on Death Martian. Because Death Martian's at war with a lot of people. We are allies. He's, he's, so, he's... At war, and at war with Sex Um, okay, well... See, I would have thought that they would have been at war with... At least Pomerania. That was a bold move by you, Dithmarsh. God, you're more bold than I am. Ah, well, well, see how it goes. Uh, but, yeah, let's get Mecklenburg out of here. And, as well, uh, one, of the, one of the things that happens... Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what I want to see. That's right. Thank you, kindly. Oh, yes! And it, yes, I love it when that happens. Oh, I didn't see what that said. Uh, a cardinal who had previously stayed in Lauenburg, close to the border, has now moved over out of our nation entirely, and has shifted his allegiance to our neighbours. The Hamburgian agents who bribed him to betray us probably thought we would not notice their hand in the matter, but they were wrong. Their intentional sabotage of our influence in the Curia is unacceptable and will not stand unchallenged. It is an affront to both us and our church. I mean, are we get corruption out of that event now? Oh, oh yeah, and we lost our cardinal. Okay, oh, whatever, doesn't matter. Um, we're going to have it in Mecklenburg. So yeah, when you're in the Holy Roman Empire, uh, I feel like that's going to be my catchphrase for this entire series. Um, 
Holy Roman Empire. Holy Roman Empire. Holy <gasps> Glory for Ascania. Scholars have discovered ancient documents tracing the heritage of our noble dynasty back to Julius Caesar himself. This must be used to our advantage. Uh, do we want the prestige? Do we want the... Oh, yeah, prestige. Thank you. I mean, doesn't really matter. Um, and we've got to keep our eye on development here as well because we're still working towards the Renaissance. I could just switch the edict over to advanced effort um, and it would probably come in... So 64... Ah, uh, yeah, no, fuck it. We'll just pump in the points. It doesn't matter. Really, at this point, it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, so when the Emperor demands unlawful territory... And now, again, I don't really know how this works. I've had it happen to me in the reverse of what I'm about to say, but the prevailing circumstances are, is if you are still at war, and say if I annex Visma and Rostock, which I totally intend to do if AE isn't a problem, um, is I'll have to call the two of them, um, because if I don't have them as cause, and I'm at peace, I'm pretty sure he can ask, the Emperor can ask for unlawful territory. Uh, however, in saying that, there have been occasions before where I've been in a war, I've annexed, and I've had the demand unlawful territory modify. I don't know if it's because if, if he's at war, you know, he's like preoccupied or what have you, but I don't know. We'll, we'll see how we go. I'd like, ideally, I'd like to... Uh, oh, yes. Thank you. Oh, I love it when these things work out. Actually, Verdon. <laughs> Wouldn't that be cool? That would be so cool. We'd be able to take on Dithmarschen. And even if we couldn't annex Dithmarschen, we could go for East Frisia because that little anomaly that East Frisia is, isn't a part of the Empire. So we wouldn't cop the unlawful uh, territory. Yeah. Hold on. <sighs> okay. So what we'll do first is we'll annex the living crap out of you. No coalition! <gasps> But I'm also weary that if I keep this war going, that he'll get full annexed and then the war just end automatically, and then I'll lose this. So why don't I just vassalize Mecklenburg? Are you at war with anyone else? Dithmarschen and me. But you're only a war at w war with Dithmarschen and East Frisia because you're allied with Verdun, which you will. Yeah. All right. So yeah, just for the sake of, because I don't. As I said before, I don't want to lose it, and I'm, I, I, I read a comment saying something along the lines of, I don't, you know, losing princes in the, uh, in the HRE, you know, I'll be an emperor of nothing if I just keep annexing everyone, so, I mean, I guess if I have a vassal, you know, that sort of keeps the princes around, and they're in, oh, can you, why? Okay, we'll just wait a little bit, hopefully we don't, because what, what, what is your war score at? So you're at minus 22, you're at minus 60 with me, so I've actually inflicted more than the rest. Okay, so we'll let this go. We'll see how we go. Um, still got the nobility pretty shitty at me. That's okay. The two. Oh, oh, oh Mecklenburg. We come crying. B b come on, take it. Take it. I'll shove it down your throat if I have to. Um, there it is. Uh, although in saying that, meh. What's the difference? It's nothing. It's nothing. And what's the AE difference? Oh, that's a lot actually. It's 15. Is that 15 the difference? It it 14. But still, see if I take this, I'm going to be limited for a little while. I won't be able to move around. I'll have the unlawful territory modifier if I vassalize them. Do you think they'll be unloyal? I mean, I would be. Maybe I should just vassalize them. Yeah, I think I might do that. Yeah. Would result in Mecklenburg's. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, fuck. Oh, Alba. No! No! Oh no. <sighs> Shit. What do we do? You're far too old. We need an heir. And, you know, I said in my previous episode, which you probably wouldn't have been able to hear, muffled under the freaking crescendos of, uh, again, fantastic soundtrack, but you were right. You, you were right. And, uh, I should have paid more attention because that, that, anyway, let's, let's look at the task at hand here. Um, <laughs> we claim, but that is good. Hey, five four five four five four. Sorry, that's good. And I'm willing to take the legitimacy hit. I guess why not? They're the church. Don't you get a church if you do the in the air in the Lords of the Arm? I find Salus, but he will die, and I won't have an heir. And at seventy three, I can't risk that. I honestly can't. And I don't. Yeah, forty. No, she is plump hen. 
Ulrich von Hersen, whatever, you know what I mean. I guess we're gonna have to. Oh, sorry guys, I don't want to do it, but. Oh, Friedrich is the new. What? He's the new heir to the throne. The succession is safe. Is that like who's underneath him? Do they show who's under? No. Anyway, let's again. I'm gonna pay attention to this. So yeah, I guess I'll vassalize. I suppose I'll vassalize. Um, actually, would you accept your vassalization yet? No, but if I peace out, oh, wouldn't that be fantastic? That would be freaking fantastic. So we'll go Mecklenburg. We'll do you vassalize? Yeah, sure. Why not? We'll vassalize you. Um, yeah. Sure. Why not? Right. What's what's a vassal or two, huh? Yeah, alright. Uh cool. Yeah, I like that. I like it a lot. Um Yeah, sure. We'll go with that. Excuse me, sorry, I'm just uh It doesn't matter what I'm doing. Whatever I'm doing is not relevant to what I'm doing right now, so I apologize. Uh I guess I can get a church in Mango. I'm still building that marketplace, are we? There you are. All done. What about now? 43. Oh, right. Right, 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 right. Yes, that's right. Our technology is abysmal. Because we are they're still doing the... Oh, well, we could get... Well, there you go. There's the 30. There's a, You know what? I'm going to leave it there. I'm not going to go anymore. I know that's quite at odds, you know. You know I was talking about evenness before, but... Whatever, we'll stick with that. That'll do. Yeah, sure. Institution spread. Went to the ETA, 61. He. <laughs> yeah. Alright, I'll leave it now. I'll leave it alone. I promise. Okay, we'll leave it. Uh, Alright, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, uh, 4%. Yeah, right. Okay, so that was caught. Yeah, definitely. And with good reason, too. I've done nothing. He's free. Oh. See? See what I mean? And he's just the war's gone. And I bet he'll respond in kind and he'll give it back. Although he's at war at Munster now. So if my theory of what I was saying before about the whole because he's at war and if he caused this, which he is, you can see. And if he does that before <coughs> excuse me. Um Yeah, right. Fuck he might actually hold on to Stade. Stade? Verden. Uh, which is actually kind of alright for me, because he's only friends with East Frisia and Pomerania. Um, and now we've got the little... Uh, we need it. I hate this. I hate choosing a rival. Oh, uh, just ha let me have one already. Like, can I? I want to I wanna rival Dithmarsh. I obviously can't, because I'm a little bit too big, but that's fine. Um, I was improving you, because we've got a mission. I guess I'll get a royal marriage with you going... No, actually, we we can't deal with any more prist Oh god, this is going to be atrocious. <sighs> Hopefully, we get those events that increase the claim strength. I don't know what fires them, what preconditions you need, but hey, look, 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 look! We got Wizvar and Rostov. I kind of want. I want Renaissance this episode. There's no doubt about it. I want Renaissance. It needs to happen. Um, I kind of would like to speed things up, and and I'd like to annex them too as well. Um, yeah. So this way we sort of subvert the whole unrest. Bala bala bala. Oh, why are you? What's wrong? What's your debt? 28. The only reason why I would be spending money now would be to, well, A, build up the force limit. <sighs> yeah, build up the force limit. And, uh, to build a church. Which we won't be able to do until we get up to tech four. <laughs> ah, I can't believe we're still on tech three. That's depressing. But uh, wars have been fought over less. Uh, so I don't know what the ratio, what, what the right ratios are. So we'll just do that, I guess. Yeah, sure. Why not? Um, and then should we build up some more claims? I think we've got claims on practically everything, right? Yeah, we do. Look at that. Except for you. Which we should. We should get a claim going on you. In the event that you get weak. 
beaten down. Wait, did we ally you in the end there? No, we still got the... Oh, we technically could, possibly, I don't know. <coughs> I think it was sort of depending on the fact that uh, you're at war with Monster 2. So this must have been a war that... Uh, who declared? Yeah, I knew it. Oldenburg. Aww. Look at that. Fuck me. That's a lot. Lucky I didn't declare on Mecklenburg. Had I declared on Mecklenburg, I would have had to have dealt with the full force of uh, you. Wait, no, that's right. Let's, let's build up relations here. Because we want to get you close to 190 as possible. Ah, uh, fuck it, Lubeck. You are our new enemy. Cool. Okay. Alright, so, and again. Um, probably not interested. Probably don't care. But, you know, I... I realized I sort of made a few mistakes in... Obviously, this is all a learning curve for me, um, and I appreciate any feedback that I get, negative and or otherwise, so uh, do let me know. I promise the return of extraordinarily loud uh, crescendos uh, <laughs> is a thing of the past. We, we won't have to deal with that again. Um, but the history, yes, the history, uh, which, again, I... You know, I, I watched the, the previous episode that I did, and again, I sort of just am, you know, taking stabs in the dark. So this time I actually have the facts. I've got them in front of me, they're right here, and they're interesting, particularly given our circumstances. So, we were talking uh, previously about how the, the, the Duchessy of Saxony um, was uh, sort of partitioned. Um, which is sort of right, and I said that it was John. It was, it was uh, John had resigned, and his brother Albert II took over. That's right. I got that right. And it was actually John's kids. John had three kids: Albert III, Eric I, and John II. So these were all John's kids. But because John I had resigned, um, he obviously had had you know no land to dish out. So it, it fell to Albert II, his brother the uncle of these three children. Um, so in, in, in 1296, um, Saxony was partitioned, providing Sax Lauenberg for the brothers. So all three of the brothers, uh, so I got it wrong. I think in the first episode I said that uh, the, 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 his nephews, uh, Albert II's nephews, gave him this. No, no, I was wrong. All the three brothers had this, and they sort of had to, like, uh, deal with it themselves, I imagine. You know, sort of... I don't imagine this would be very large area either. I've sort of looked up photos of it. It's kind of cute. It's kind of quaint, you know, sitting sort of nestled uh, in it next to the Elbe River there. It's 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 like the, the halfway point before, I imagine back in the day, um, before you would sort of travel to get into Hamburg or to go to Lübeck or to head up into Denmark. Like, this is just the little town beforehand, you know? And you go and you have a pint or what have you and then wake up in the morning and on you go. So, you know, it's situated in a really... A very, very good location, actually. Um, yeah, I suppose just having these two major cities so close to it, it sort of, you know, left it as the the halfway point. It wasn't it wasn't really necessary. So, you know, I like the the idea of it. So yeah, um, twelve ninety six, the Duchessy of Saxony was partitioned. There was Sax Lauenburg, which was given to the three children: Eric the first, John the second, and Albert the third. These are all John's children. Um, and then Albert II was given what is called Saxe-Wittenberg. So I was right. I, I did say Wittenberg uh, in, in the first uh, episode as well. So I imagine that would be what is sort of like Lundberg today. Or, you know, it, again, these, these borders, they're not going to be super accurate, obviously. I mean, yeah, you know. But uh, it's kind of cool just to sort of, you know, get an idea. And as I said, the history is really, really, really fascinating. Um... And it's just, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm from Australia originally, and, uh, you know, I've, I've got history, obviously, everyone has history, uh, but, you know, it's, it's not detailed, it's sort of patchy, uh, you know, my father's side was from Scotland, my mother's side is from Greece, uh, so, yeah, I don't know, it's interesting, but there's just not a lot of details, and there's not a lot of, like, connections that I can make, you know? I always make the joke that I'm related to William Wallace, so I just, you know, I'd like to think that, but probably not. <laughs> but yeah, we're from yeah somewhere somewhere just north of the border. Oh, England. Yes, you're going to be a naughty great power, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, you are. Although, look at that. Yeah, two-front war. I suppose you're just ditching your continental holdings. Which is fair enough. I would too. Um, yeah, so I just thought that was, yeah, really interesting. So the three brothers, Albert III, 
Eric the first and John the John the uh, second, all of John's kids, uh, essentially became the first sort of ruling uh, class of what would come to be our little duchessy of saxe lauenburg which I thought was really cool. Um, look how small it is. Imagine three people ruling over this. I mean, you'd be stepping on your toes all the time. So, by 1303, the three jointly ruling brothers had partitioned saxe lauenburg yet again into three shares. Uh, however, Albert III died already in 1308, so that the surviving brothers established, after a territorial realignment in 1321, the Lauerberg Elder Line, with John II ruling saxe burgendorf moln seated in Burgendorf, and then there was the Lauerberg Younger Line, which his brother ran, so Albert died, Albert III died, and then there was John II and Eric I. And Eric I ruled Saxe, Ratzenberg, Lauerberg, which is is our duchessy, because it, it, it says that, um, so his brother John II ruled Saxe, Burgendorf, Moln, uh, and that was seated in Bergdorf. And if I recall correctly, because uh, in the MEIOU, Mao and Taxes, uh, there is, you can, obviously, oh god, the, the HRE is just so jam-packed. I, 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 yeah, I have a little bit of a, you know, uh, <laughs> it's just, it's fantastic. There are so many tiny little, which is so true to the time as well. Um, I'm not, you know, totally proficient in all the knowledge, but so fascinating. So many, you know, different people and different countries and different little cities and you know I was reading something oh it doesn't matter uh, sorry I'm prattling here um, I'll finish off this you know, sort of a uh, uh, half-assed attempt at a history lesson here but I, I quite like it so yeah it's Eric the first Eric the first was the first ruler uh, the first to establish his uh, his family as the rightful rulers of uh, Saxe Ratzburg Lauenburg um, situated on the Elbe River so where this is would have been the, the, the first sort of establishment. So, um, And then his brother, John II, wielded electoral privilege for the Lauenburg Askeniers, and, uh, r but rivaled their cousin, Rudolf I of Saxe-Württemberg. I don't really understand what that means. Um, looks like, you know, the usual sort of uh, Germanic incestual f inviting. Um, so yeah, uh, I just thought it was sort of interesting. I've got I've got a few more things here, but I kind of want to spread it out because we're at 1303 here, or 1321, should I say, when the first... And so he is an Askinia. Sorry, when I said... I said in the, the previous episode... The, so yeah, Eric uh, Eric the, the first was the first ruling Askinia of saxe lauenburg So I'm going to assume, and that was in 1303, 1321, sorry, I keep saying that. I'm going to assume by 1444, Bernhard was, what, 60-something? So, you know, we'll call him the great-great-grandson, I suppose, Bernhard. Probably just the great-grandson, actually. I really think about it because he was pretty old when we started so there you go so you know humble beginnings humble beginnings but yeah I'll, I'll sort of leave it and then you know in, in following episodes I'll uh, I'll sort of you know uh, reveal more particularly you know sort of the the involvement uh, and the diplomatic relations that uh, uh, Saxe Lauenburg had and this tiny little you know country uh, had with Brandenburg who was a main player in the Holy Roman Empire the Golden Bull uh, and Bohemia as well. So, you know, there was some sort of interaction. There would have had to have been. They were, you know, they were all a part of the same assembly. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, we'll look at that later. Anyway, back to the nitty-gritty. Sorry. Uh, look at this. Look at this. We're getting there. So, we'll, we'll, we'll build up relations with you. <gasps> I should have paid attention. Why was that? Why? Oh, if only you could be scolding me right now because I should have been paying attention. I could have swung in there because we have room, we have room, we have a a aggressive expansion that we can still take on without coalitions forming, and Nassau is pretty shitty, so let's do it. Let us do it, and you're loyal, so... If I... Wait, are we at, we're at war though, aren't we? Yeah, what did, why did... No, we're not, no, no, they reset, don't they? Yeah, the time is all reset, because he was released. When oh, he doesn't even have an army, oh, this is just perfect, I'll just stroll on in there. God hell am I on about? Uh, right. Uh, so we want to set the behaviour of Mecklenburg into actions. We want to have you supportive of the great Duchessy of saxe -Lauenburg. Um Perfect. Easy done. Um, so, yeah, you'll attach and then we'll go after Nassau after this. Nassau. Nassau. 
39.7. Alright, can you just... I'm sick of these little modifiers. They're rude. Um, so yeah, Bremen. We'll fix up Bremen. Um, also, one thing I sort of only really found out recently, which... Well, not recently. It was a few months ago, but... Uh, I noticed that, yeah, you build a spy network. I've heard in a spy network. This country is blah, blah, blah. Um, oh, it's defended at 105 efficiency. This determines their chance of detecting and disrupting. See, you know that you play hundreds of hours of this gameplay and you just constantly keep finding these little things and I love it. It's fresh. I'm looking at it with a new set of eyes. Uh, it's it's great. So what I'm going to do is I'll build up a spy network because as you can see here, Prestige. Presti well, I know for a fact that it increases siege. <gasps> Oh, there we go. Oh, oh, God, yes! Oh, this is all working out so well. Um, oh, sorry. It's just, there you go, there's the Renaissance. We've got another territory added into our fold. This is fantastic. Everything's working well. Um, then Murphy's Law should kick in any moment now, and then Denmark will declare on me. Uh, Bohemia will decline the alliance. Uh, look at that. Look at that. Again, I was so unnecessary with the... Because, look, I reckon we're the only... Yeah, look at that. It is only Italy thus far, and uh, the Netherlands as well, or Belgium, should I say, um, that have embraced it. So, you know, it, it was unnecessary. Yes, I suppose you could say that, depending on who you are. Um, you certainly know Bernhard, that's for sure, because he was... Uh, oh God. Um, yeah, so, fuck it. That's all right. We'll take off the edict. Uh, we'll leave it alone. No edict. And we will annex the living shit at... Oh, right, right, we've got to go take on Stade. Uh, not Stade, Nassau. Nassau? Well, I do wonder. I can't be bothered with the... Yeah, I suppose I should, shouldn't I? Alright. Give it, give it to me. Give it to me. And we shall slip in, undetected. Um, ready to... Rain absolute hell over the Nassau lands. Yeah, fuck it, I don't even... I don't even... Look, I never scorch the earth. Wait, wait, maybe someone could tell me. What's the point in scorching, scorching the earth? I imagine, like, if you're, if you're someone like Muscovy, and, you you know, you're, you're fighting one of those small little Central Asian countries, and they're a tributary, and you want to annex their territory, but you don't want to have to deal with Ming, uh, then I imagine you just sort of go in, wreak, wreak havoc, scorch a heap of earth. It does cost, uh... It does cost, doesn't it? Oh, those are some nice rolls to start off. <laughs> uh, yeah, nice rolls. Really nice rolls. That's beautiful. I love it. This is all working out so... Wait, you were meant to get to 100, so... Continue the operation. You may fire when ready. Yeah, cool. Awesome. Let's take them off. Wipe them out. All of them to see this stunted slime in my sight again. <laughs> Where are you buggering off to? Wherever you're going, dealing with you. Are you also at war? I don't think so. No. Well, bam! There we go. Alright. So, what did we... Yeah, wait. Are you? Have you got a siege pip at all? No, you don't. Land fire damage. Okay, so you, you're not really worth... Two shakes of a lamb's tail. Uh, okay, and then we can cancel all of the military axis, and then our armies will be exiled afterwards. Perfect. Perfect. I do enjoy this. Um, speaking of enjoying things, I am really enjoying this. This is a lot of fun. Like, I was telling a few people yesterday um, at work about it, and I was like, I just... It's a lot of fun. I didn't expect it to be this much fun, and uh, I certainly think that my studies is going to take a hit as a result of this newfound infatuation, but, um, and you know what? Fuck it. I've got the time today, so this, this episode's going to go on just that little bit longer, because um, I'd like to see, I'd like to sort of pick them up, I'd like to get them in my fold. Yeah, fuck it. I don't care. Oh, it didn't, it doesn't, it doesn't affect legitimacy if they're your vassal? Cool. Okay. Sure. Why not? Why is your war score different? Yeah, no matter. Um, but yeah, it'd be cool. It'd be cool if we can annex Mecklenburg, and then we'd have a nice little... Ooh, it'd look beautiful. 
Uh, and then we just got to finish off these two states, which again is easier said than done because one of them's a free city and the other one's a leader of a bloody trade league. You know, <laughs> I have a feeling that we're not going to be able to deal with that uh, very, very easily. Bohemia again. And we're positive. Oh, my lord. Is there a potential? Is there a potential? A noble, one of our Askineers. <gasps> well, well, well. Would you look at that? That's fantastic. I like that. Maybe we can claim the throne too. Although that's a bit... I haven't really played around with the Game of Thrones thing. I actually, you know what, to be brutally honest, I think I've played more republics than I have monarchies. Uh, so as a result, I haven't really sort of thrown my... And, I, you know, I... I think there's a lot of people that can support me in saying that I believe the whole royal marriage slash personal union thing is just... And an absolute anomaly. It's like the economics of Victoria too. No one really knows what's going on, but there are certain things that you can sort of, you know, work to your advantage. I, uh, I quite like it actually. It's, 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 yeah, an anomaly. You, you can never really tell. So, yeah, we've lost. Oh wow! Everyone loves the Habsburgs, don't they? God, it's those chins, man. It's those chins. Uh, their beautiful chins. Um, is anyone is anyone around me a militarist? No, except for you. What have you got claims on? Absolutely about everything. Yeah, <laughs> Denmark too. Yeah, I I actually quite like the whole characteristic things. I the personality. Sorry. Um, uh, I mean, it's quite dangerous. Yeah, Mehmet, you son of a bitch. They seem to always have militarist leaders. I don't know if that's a uh, scripted thing or... Well, that's a nice leader, too. Excuse me. My apologies. I am a disgusting human being. Uh, but I mean well. So, you know. Don't hate me. Uh, Alright. Cool. I'm... You know, I <laughs> the high pitched sounds is usually an indication of the fact that I'm, I'm satisfied. I am satisfied. You get that Polish grain out of here. This is, but wait, do we even have any grain? No, we don't. Oh, okay. <laughs> Regardless, I am going to play. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, I, can't, I like the economics. I like the economic side of things. I like, I like the simplicity yet the complexity involved in EU fours. Uh, economic system um, so yeah I don't know it's let's try and well we don't we obviously want to dominate trade that's that's something we that's the idea um, but yeah I don't know I don't know I do like the little effects here yeah but you know the little grain and what's this again an insult from Bavir excuse me oh right let's deal with this first uh, I'll bring you home because you're a bit of a waste there at cap uh, so we'll take you and over here. Do we need any more prestige? No, I don't bother. Good. Could just give up. Well, he is our ally. And that'll set him back for a bit. Let's cancel some of these alliances too. Yep, the Palatinate. Anyone that's a, an elector, I suppose. Wait, are you. Oh, this is unnecessary. This is so unnecessary. But let's just check. So Cologne does have a claim there. They are a free city though, so it doesn't really matter. Because I was going to say, if I revoke that claim, maybe... Uh, uh, yeah, if I uh, rescind their alliance uh, with Aachen, then maybe Cologne will declare. But Cologne's not that stupid. Not even a militarist, I would think, would declare on a free city. So, if... Uh, burden doesn't matter. So you're just friends with free cities. Forget it. Give them a false sense of security, I suppose. Well, he actually, this is the thing. I like to, I like to have OPMs ready. Yeah. Well, who the hell am I kidding? <laughs> I said at the beginning, and I'm no master strategist, and here I am talking about these, you know, having these delusions of grandeur. But you know, I like the idea of sort of having free, uh, open OPMs at the see, see, no, no coalition. Isn't that great? That's great. I love that. And we'll get, we'll get moving on you because you're going to be sooky. Um, gonna have a little and I don't blame you you know this this is I suppose your rightful territory or at least your rightful territory to protect <laughs> um, but yeah having free OPMs at the ready so that when and if I do become Emperor revoke revoke and then just slot them back so I can keep that uh, Imperial authority going um, yeah cool 
yeah, I'm not doing any justice by annexing uh, heaps of these smaller... Again, obviously, we want Bremen, we want Hamburg, we want Lübeck, Dietmarsch, we want this block, because that's a lot of money there. Holstein as well, a lot of money. Um, so thank you. Start. See, we're getting somewhere. If we were to get Hamburg, I honestly think we could take on the world with Hamburg. It's so funny. Look how small that province is. And yet, he, I mean, what's their share of the, the trade node here? Look at that. 35, 30, 35%. I don't really know what all of this means. Sort by current trade power. Okay, so you got 46 46 trade power, and you know, fair enough. Yeah, actually, it's not that much. Lubeck would be a much greater acquisition. Well, uh, and they're more likely to be a viable candidate as well. Brunswick, do we rival you? You've picked up a few, haven't you? Understandably so. Sort of brooding over you, aren't we? Well, we will be. We will be. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll I mean, I don't like... What's the What's the negative? What if I don't have it? You have a penalty to power projection. Not enough rivals. So we get minus one. I mean, not like it's anything too special. Uh, does it say anything else? Penalty to your power projection. And score. And score, really? What's your score again? <laughs> Uh, there it is. What even is this? I never even bothered to look at this. I'm just, you know, sometimes I'll be like, you know, the, the number one power in the world, and it'll say like I'm 12th or something, so I suppose it has to do a, a range of factors, right? It would make sense. Anyway, whatever. I know I should, I know, you probably, like, look at it more. Figure it out. Work it out so you're not constantly looking at things. Oh. Unlawful territory, you say. Wow, 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 wow. Um, you know what? Fuck it. Brunswick. Yeah, we don't like you. And none of our allies like you either. Yep. Yeah. Yep. If Bremen as well. We're not that you're an ally. Bremen. You're a prospective, uh... Oof, you're gonna take a hit too. Aren't you? Whoa, that was at 86, just two months ago. That aggressive expansion, that unlawful territory. It... Oh, I didn't realise how much money we had. That's great. That's... This is... Holy shit. Guys, I... I do apologize for being so dumbfounded, but uh, sometimes circumstances really work out. I'm totally going to go <laughs> when I said uh, the other the other day that, uh, you know, in due course, in the future, I want to build just a ring of forts around Saxe-Lauenburg. Fuck it. That's exactly what we're doing. <laughs> it is, yeah, because this is part of the same state as well. I think anyone coming down south will have to go through Loombao. Oh, yeah, again, the fort systems, they change so frequently, I, I can't keep track. Um, I'm just here for the fun, the fun of it all. Oh, dip below those triple digits, I like to keep it up. Triple. What's taking you so long? Why are you in this war? And only eight... Aha, uh -huh, because it's France, I see. Uh -huh. That makes utter sense. Uh, so, attacking Scotland in the English conquest of Lothane. Okay, well, go on, get in there, dig them up. Um, Alright, well... I know I said I'd go for a little bit longer. I kind of want to, but, you know, how many people watch 40 minutes worth of gameplay, you know? I know I do, but how many other people do? <laughs> uh, so, what I might do is, I might call it there. Uh, we're in a really good position. We really are. Where we left off last time, we only had two provinces. We weren't sure what we were doing. You know, where could we move? We've picked up two new acquisitions here. We've had we've got Mecklenburg as a vassal, which we will eventually... Uh, annex, and then of course we, we picked up Verdun today as well, so I'm quite pleased. Ah, we can start building ships too. Actually, has anyone got ideas? Portugal, have you picked up exploration ideas yet? No, you haven't. I remember back before the age system was around, um, and uh, I think Portugal didn't have all those innate buffs to uh, um, colonialism and, and to colonizing in general. Um, I always, I always, well not always, but I would usually, I would play Friesland. Friesland's a really, really interesting, the United Provinces. Uh, I find it really interesting because they're an administrative republic to start off with. And I don't think there are very many other, I would say that, yeah, they're certainly the only ones in Europe, right? Oh no, no, Siena. Why is, why is, why are you an oligarchic 
Republic. I don't know if you start off as a... Well, regardless, it's just really, really fascinating. And, and I would play like a colonial race with Portugal. And in fact, I remember um, hiring out Condottieri to... I think it was Morocco, even. I don't know. I can't remember. I, you have to have a certain amount of relations, right? But I did try. I tried actively to sort of diminish their ability to expand. And I would race to Cape Verde. Verde? Verde? Whatever it is. I would race them. Uh, and I hated it because you'd have to pick up that extra colonial range advisor. You would have to ensure that you had like the third idea group of uh, exploration. What is it again? Yeah, overseas exploration. So anyway, yeah. Um, it was rough, but sometimes you do it. And I knew, I knew it was going to be a good game if I picked up Cape Verde before Portugal. And they always were. They always were. Anyway, all right, I'm going to leave it there. But thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it all. Um, and I hope that <laughs> after long last, after three episodes, I should just scrap my old episodes and just start here. But I think we've finally uh, resolved the music issue and the, 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 the blaringness of it all. So again, I do apologize. It was really annoying and it probably worked to my disadvantage because most people didn't even get through the first episode. Uh, and the second episode is no better. Uh, so anyway, uh, I hope this is much better and I hope you enjoyed, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. So yeah, until next time. Thanks guys. Cheers.